today on Sunday, September 16, 2012, in the New York Post, we broke to the papers. This is Dr. Philip Dreis reporting live on location in homelessness. Got my bag and my stick going to the beach. And this guy, Feds, Question, Loon, who set fire to Muslim world. That's an absolute lie. That's an absolute lie. Mr. New York Post, that's bad. You've got an American that was able to push the button on the guys, white America calls the enemy, black America calls friends because they come from Yemen, they have these stores, they live around us. And the New York Post says something like that. If he set these guys off, and the only thing he sacrificed was about four or five guys at an embassy to set them off and they don't come over here to do something to us. What, do you, what, what is this? That's psychological warfare. Have them fight in their country instead of fighting over here. You know, he sacrificed four guys because I was sacrificed for Mayor Bloomberg's evolving girl policy and I have to talk about what is real? What is real is the stick. And what's real is me not having one of those and having to pick up one of these. Ah. That's about 37 pounds last I weighed it. Put it on my back. Ah. And start walking. My job is to start walking because Dr. Philip Dreis is all alone on this crusade. And it's the loneliest thing in the world. Not even Martin Luther King or Thurgood Marshall was ever this alone. They did it from the luxury of whatever. And those guys, Martin Luther King was martyred for nothing. <laughs> he was martyred for nothing. His legacy ain't going nowhere. It ain't doing nothing for black people. It got some black people somewhere. But Martin, Martin Luther King's legacy and what he's done with all of that, what he accomplished, don't mean jack in 2012 for black people. It means something for the immigrants because they're now benefiting from it. The African Americans that have spent the currency of those events by those great black people and now it's America took that and gave it to somebody else. To NAFTA and CAFTA is what nobody prepared since Ronald Reagan. Nobody prepared America for the things to come. The things that came is what white people have been buffered from because they dump everything down here where you live as a black guy and they get out before you do. Those the Hindus, the Muslims, the Hispanics, everybody, everybody has beaten you. Hi, how you doing? That's what it's all about, people. It's about making more people 
for America's growth and continued growth and America's economy, as the president said, ain't got nothing to do with you. And black America has not buffered itself from those inevitable changes through those dynamics. For it to be able to sustain a flood of immigrants, much like the Western and Europeans who came here around the turn of the 20th century. Here it is a hundred years later. You have the largest migration in the United States of America thanks to NAFTA and CAFTA. Black people weren't written in the plans just like black people weren't written in your constitution. Only the Haitian constitution wrote anything for black people, significantly black people. That's a black country, although it's French and Creole. That's why you have those two languages on our passport. I haven't been in Haiti since 1967. I have watched this life in America. And this life in America is no longer fit for my human consumption. You don't remember me? No. From down there? Where? When you was a little kid. For real? I remember. You don't remember? No. Look at how great he looks, everybody. All right, buddy. Nice to see you guys. All right. Hi there. Right. No, I remember him from when he was a little kid. <laughs> Beautiful. Peppers you're growing, yeah. Wow. Those peppers over there, we grow them in Haiti. Mm -hmm. Which ones are these? I don't know these little ones up front. Huh? Okay. They must be hotter. No, they're sweet? All right. Okay, my friend. Bye-bye. This is Dr. Philip Dreis. And you've just seen three different types of people. You have a person of Indian descent, and you have a Mexican, and a Nicaraguan, and the three people you've seen in this video. I get along with any and everybody. And those are the people I fight for to help them understand that they got to assimilate with white America to be Americans. That's why I worked so hard to lose that what's called in the ghetto, that funny bunny coconut head accent. I lost that as much as I possibly could. I've even been told that I sound more European when I'm on the phone and I'm not enraged by anything or anybody, that I sound European. My mother paid enough money to get me educated that way. And I believe that whole ethnocentrism of any type ill serves the United States of America as a great empire. Definitely a great empire. I'll probably be around for a few hundred years more. But like all empires, even the Egyptian, after thousands of years, is going to leave its mark. Chinese had empires too. Lots of empires, man. Lots of empires. They've all gone down the two. The most prominent empire today is the great Anglo-American Empire. 
And on that note, now you know where you're at. Now you know what you're dealing with. Let's see if you can figure out what to do about it. My job is to get on the other side of town and give the bus driver a few pennies. But that's all I got to get on the bus to get to the beach for me able to be able to sleep, sleep soundly and at peace, even though I'm living like an animal. That's why it's so important for somebody to understand when I say I want legal revenge, I'm entitled to it. I'm entitled to it. Can't tell me the United States of America wants revenge and I can't get none. An empire isn't God. There's no Caesar here. That's why it's supposed to be a republic. Have we lost that? I took an oath to protect the Constitution of the United States of America against all enemies, foreign and domestic. And the President has not relieved me of that order yet. Thank you. This is a supplemental law for, for September 16, 2012. Tomorrow on QPTV, we'll make history again. Dr. Philip Dreit airs the political accountability documentary on QPTV, Channel 34, in Queens County, New York, at 10 a.m. Hey, how you doing? <laughs> oh, my God. 6,000 of my videos removed off of YouTube because of Dante's Medina of the Bally Gym in Jamaica, who wanted to cover up his malfeasance and his tolerance of the malfeasance of Mike, the locker room guy, who they had to change his hours from, from 3 to 11 to 11 to 7 because he was clashing with too many members from 7 to 11. And I get punished for it. 6,000 of my videos removed. That's all right. I can live with that. Let's see if that might spark up some more interest. Go take a look. Bye-bye.